This is a tutorial for Dex Science at 6.3. Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to learn about conductors and non-conductors. We are going to build a device called the conductor detector and we are going to make our own electrical component. We are going to be using materials from the compartment B6.4.2.1. So in order to be able to build our conductor detector, we are going to need some basic electronic components. We are actually going to build what I usually call the simplest electrical circuit. And as always, you will find your components will come on this piece of paper. So all you need to do is to remove them. Okay, so these are the components that we are going to need in order to build our simple conductor detector. Okay, so how do we build our conductor detector? It's a really, really simple device. First, because it's an electrical circuit, we obviously would need a source of power, okay? So this battery holder is going to hold our dry cell, which will serve as our source of electrical energy. So we are going to need just one a dry cell and we place our dry cell into the battery holder with the positive side of the dry cell on the red and then the negative side on the black so you have something that looks like this really simple now once we are done with this we're going to take our buzzer the buzzer is an electronic component that converts electrical energy into sound energy okay so we're going to have the buzzer and then we are going to get some wires okay so we have some male to male wires here we're going to just take two of them out like this we're going to take two of them out like this we have a female header here and so we're just going to connect a male header to it like this and then we are going to connect to the buzzer now when we are connecting to the buzzer there's something we need to note now when connecting the buzzer you need to note there is a plus sign written on the buzzer okay now that shows you that that part of the buzzer should be connected to the positive terminal of your dry cell Okay, and so that is the red wire, the red wire on your dry cell. You're going to connect your red wire to the positive side of the buzzer. But as you can see, this is another female header. And so we're going to connect the middle wire to it like this. And then once you're done with that, we're going to connect our buzzer positive side of the buzzer to the positive side of our dry cell and then finally we are going to connect the negative side as well and then as soon as we connect we are going to hear some sound and that is the sound of the buzzer converting the electrical energy into sound energy okay But once we have this, we are not done. This is just a simple circuit to enable our buzzer to produce sound. But we need to take it a step further. We need to move on to build our conductor detector. By making one simple modification to this already existing circuit, we can turn it into a simple device 
that we can use to detect materials that are conductors and ones that are not conductors. You think you can think of a way to do this? You can pause this video at this point to see if you can figure out for yourself that simple modification you need to do. I hope you got it right. The simple modification is to just add one extra male to male wire to the buzzer. Now once you've done this, you have two male wires open like this. And when they touch each other, you have sound. When they touch each other, you have sound. What does this tell us? This tells us that whenever there is continuity, that is when current flows through, the buzzer comes on. And so if there's a substance that allows current to flow through, the buzzer is going to come on. And for substances that do not allow current to flow through, the buzzer will not come on. And so with this simple modification, we have ourselves a conductor detector, a device that we can use to determine whether a material is a conductor or not. It's really, really interesting. So now what we're going to do is to identify some common materials as conductors and non-conductors. Again, conductors allow electric current to flow through. And so when we touch them with the leads, current will flow through and the buzzer will sound. Non-conductors do not allow current to flow through. And so when we touch them, they will not allow current to flow through and the buzzer will not sound. So let's go ahead and test some materials. We are going to start off with some materials that are already inside the set. We have this rubber material and we also have some paper clips and thumbtacks as well here. So I touch the material with the leads, nothing happens. Let's try again. Nothing happens. Okay. That means that this material is a non-conductor or it's an insulator. It does not allow current to flow through. And so when I touch it, current doesn't flow through. Okay, the buzzer does not produce sound. Now let's try something else. Let's put this away. Let's try this paper clip. Okay, so I'm going to touch that one too. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. As you can tell, the buzzer is producing sound when I touch it. That means that this material is a conductor. Okay, very simple. Let's try the thumb tag as well. As you might have guessed, this thumb tag is also a conductor. Okay, good. Now let's try these wires, okay? I'm just gonna take one of them. When I touch the material around the wire, nothing happens. When I touch the material around the wire, nothing happens. But when I touch the metal, the metals at both ends, current flows through. This means that the material around the wire it's an insulator. And then there is the conductor that is inside of the wire. And this is how most wires are made, with an insulator around it and the conductor inside of it. Let's go ahead and try some other fun materials. So we have a rubber band here. You've been using the rubber band for a lot of activities. Let's try to see nothing happens. The rubber band is a non-conductor or an insulator. Let's try a pencil. Let's try a pencil. No, 
the pencil is made of wood and it's not a conductor. Let's try this piece at the end of the pencil. No, it's not a conductor either. Let's try the tip of the pencil. Okay, so this one is not a conductor either. Okay, now let's try one final material here. We have a simple pair of glasses. There are several different kinds of material in here. First, we can try the glass. And you see that nothing happens. Let's try the frame. Okay, see that nothing happens. This frame is not made of metal. There's some rubber down here as well. Let's try it and see. Nothing happens as well. So this entire object is made up of insulators or non-conducting material. Great. So you can go ahead and then detect several different materials with adult supervision, of course, with your simple conductor detector. The next thing we are going to do is to try and build our own electronic component. How are we going to do this? We've understood the concept of conductors and non-conductors. So can we apply this concept to create our own electronic component? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's take all these materials out. So, we are going to build our own electronic component. As you might realize in the other circuits, there was a switch. A switch is a very important electronic component. And what does a switch do? A switch allows you to open the circuit, that's, that's not allow current to flow through, and when you close it, it allows current to flow through. And so we can apply this concept of conductors and non-conductors to create such a simple electronic component that can allow us to open and close a switch, okay? So we have these materials here that can allow us to do that. We know that this material is a non-conductor or is an insulator. We know that these ones are conductors. And so we're going to combine them in an interesting way so that we build our own switch. How do we do this? It's very simple. We are going to take our paper clip and then take one thumb tag and then put the thumb tag through the paper clip this way so that it locks in place. And then we are going to put everything into this insulating material. Okay. Now the next thing we are going to do is to get another thumb tag and then place it here, some distance away from the other one. As you might have realized, this is already beginning to look like the symbol of a switch, where we can open it and we can close it. We can open it and we can close it. When you close it, all the conductors touch. And so we have a wire here, and another wire here, current can flow through. And when you open it, and the conductors are not touching, the current cannot flow through the insulating material. And so we say the circuit is opened. Okay? Always make sure that the thumb tags are firmly placed into the rubber material. And so let's put this switch into our simple circuit. How do you do that? It's very simple. You place the metal on the wire underneath the thumb tag. Don't push it through the rubber. Make sure it is touching the thumb tag. So put it just under the thumb tag and just above the rubber material. Okay? You're going to do the same for this side as well. You're going to push it underneath the thumb tag and just on top of the rubber material. So there we have it. We've created our own electronic component and placed it into our simple circuit. So now our circuit has a 
source of power, it has a buzzer, and it has a switch. So let's go ahead and close this switch to see what happens. Just as predicted, because all of the conductors are touching, current is flowing through. And when we open the switch, current does not flow through. Just go ahead and close that again. Current flows through. And when we open the switch, the current cannot move through the insulator. And so we say the switch is opened. Once again, we've seen how the simple things that we learn can be applied to create very interesting technology. We all have switches in our homes for our bulbs, for our TVs, for our radio sets. And here, we've learned the fundamental principles and we've created our own switch by applying the simple scientific concept of conductors and non-conductors. This is really, really exciting. Another exciting project completed using the DEX science set 6.3. See you in the next video.